Uh, hello, and thank you for joining us for our session, SEO metrics that actually matter. Uh, my name is Daniel Inzueto, and I'm happy to welcome you to today's session. If this is your first time attending one of our workshops, let me provide some context on Startout. Startout accelerates the growth of the LGBTQ plus community to drive our economic empowerment, building a world where every LGBTQ plus entrepreneur has equal access to lead, succeed, and shape the workforce of the future. I'm excited to introduce our host for today's session, Ryan Ward from Rex Marketing, one of our favorite partners. Ryan, excited to have you with us, and the floor is yours. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, Danny. Yeah, it's great to meet uh, meet everyone here, and I appreciate you attending. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about SEO metrics that matter and how they uh, relate to overall business health and business growth. So let's go ahead and just jump in. Quick uh, just intro about me that uh, give you some context for me. I'm based in Austin. Uh, I have been the head of growth marketing a handful of companies before starting Rex Marketing, uh, was the co-founder of a ed tech company that was acquired in, in 2021. Uh, mainly, mainly come from like a healthcare education background in terms of my marketing experience. Um, really, uh, I'd say my strong suit is in content marketing, SEO. Uh, so when it comes to SEO growth and uh, content growth for companies, that's, that's really what what I do. Uh, at Rex Marketing, we focus in the areas of SEO, content marketing, uh, web development, and paid for early stage startups. Uh, like I said, we focus really in the consumer healthcare space and education space. However, we work with a variety of startups and early stage companies to help them reach their ideal client at the right time uh, or their ideal customer at the right time. Um, so that's just a brief intro about us, me, my background. First, just to kind of cover what we're going to be talking about today. So I want to just kind of, I know all of us are coming to the meeting, to, to the uh, call today with maybe different and varying experiences and knowledge of SEO. So I want to just like speak very high level briefly, like the importance of SEO, what is SEO, just so that everyone kind of has the same foundation before we jump in. Uh, going to then jump, jump into what are the key SEO performance metrics, in my opinion, that you should be looking at and uh, tracking uh tracking progress, growth accordingly, and then how to actually track these things, which is sometimes a big question in itself of like, okay, these are the things I need to be looking at. Where do I do that? So um, just jumping in first, what is SEO? Uh, obviously, if you're attending today, uh, you know that SEO is important for your business and for your business growth. Uh, search uh, SEO stands for search engine optimization. When we talk about search engines, we're mainly talking about Google. 91% uh, of all online searches are done on Google, but other key search engines to, to note, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, and there's many, many more out there. Um, however, when we talk about search engine optimization, we're really talking about optimizing for Google algorithms and Google performance, which in turn optimizes for the other search engines that are out there. The importance of SEO, and I think the most powerful thing about SEO is you're getting in front of the right person at the right time when they're looking for information. Uh, so SEO is gonna be, is a driver and your main driver of organic traffic to your website. Um, so how are you gonna reach people um, who you're not paying for? Like you're not paying on Google ads to get someone, you're not paying on Meta to bring someone. This is someone who's coming in, finding your content or your website organically, and, you know, potentially engaging in and purchasing your services or your product. Um, additionally, SEO is important in terms of generating backlinks and, and uh, generating backlinks to improve your domain authority. So this goes into helping establish your brand or your company or your website as an authority on a subject um, or on your product or your industry or, or whatever the case may be. And obviously with that in turn helps establish credibility. You know, if you are, if someone is searching for, uh, you know, I'm using this as an example because we work with a dementia company. Uh, if someone's looking for resources or information on dementia health or dementia related topics and your website or your brand is showing at the top of search results on multiple pages as people are looking for information, that's obviously going to help establish credibility of your offering, your brand, your services. Um, if someone is constantly seeing your name, seeing your brand associated with the content that relates to what someone's looking for. Uh, and again, the power, true power behind SEO and, and Google search and showing in search engines 
is getting in front of the right person at the right time. Um, you know, if someone's actively searching for uh, to get answers to questions or looking for a solution to whether it be, uh, you know, dementia uh, related care, whether it be looking for solutions to buying a new cooking product or whether it's they're looking for a solution on how to, you know, where to get a haircut you know, at, in their wherever they're located. The, the real power behind SEO is being able to be at, at the top of search results when someone is actively looking for that information um, versus, you know, a competitor showing before you. Um, and then to call out to like, ideally, you want to be driving to be the first spot in Google search. I'm sure we can all attest whenever we're conducting searches online, we most often are engaging with the links at the very top of the page, or most often the number one uh, spot on the page of Google search results. Um, and by, you know, being in, the, I'd say the, the first page is like critical, being in the top five is like ideal, being number one is like the golden spot to have. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can all attest to that in our own experience of using Google search. Being at the top and being a number one is is kind of the goal when it comes to to SEO. So the different types of SEO. So there is on page SEO, off page SEO, and local SEO. Um, and you may have heard of some of these terms before, but but on page SEO relates to the actual content and the keywords, the architecture of your actual website, the information that's on your domain. That's what we refer to as on-page SEO. Off-page SEO relates to things that are off of your domain, um, that are on other places on the internet that drive back to your website. Uh, so for example, a, a, one of the biggest impacts on, on off-page SEO performance is backlinks. Uh, and we aren't gonna delve too, in, too much into backlinks, but backlinks are just where other places on the internet refer back to your content or your website. You know, if there's an article on another website that refers to one of your blog pieces or refers to your homepage or, you know, something along those lines, that's considered a backlink. Some other uh, key uh, components of off-page SEO are like social indicators. So if you produce blog content, is it being shared throughout uh, social pages? Is it being shared on LinkedIn? Is it being shared on Facebook? Um, those types of things, those are more of off-page indicators that you're, that help your overall search performance. And then local SEO, generally speaking, it's, this is more important for in-person offerings, things that have a physical location or have a geographic um, component to, to their search rankings. So for example, if you're a local business, if you're a brick and mortar store, if you, you know, offer services across a certain state, we see this pretty often too. Like if you're a, a healthcare provider and you're licensed to provide services in Texas, for example, local SEO also plays a role into helping you uh, show for geographic search terms, like you know, therapist in Austin, therapist in Texas, you know, those types of things. So local SEO that that's really what that refers to. It's more the geographic type of search results and search terms. So uh, now that we kind of just have like a very general high level view of like SEO, the importance of it, and you know what makes up SEO performance. Uh, let's dive into the metrics, which is really what I think everyone here is for is to everyone here today is to learn about. So there are a number of metrics um, that are important when it comes to tracking uh, SEO performance and just organic performance. Um, we're gonna delve into each of these in deeper detail. But at the end of the day, I think that, uh, you know, each of these, I like to say to each of these um, have different weight in my mind of how important they are and, and the impact their the overarching business impact they'll have on, on your company. So first impressions, um, which we may all be familiar with this term, I'll, I'll delve more into that, or views, um, clicks, click through rate, organic traffic, or, or organic sessions, uh, conversion rates, keyword ranking, domain authority, referring domains, and then bounce rates. So just to, and I'm sure maybe we've, we've heard of some of these terms before, maybe some of these are new things that we haven't heard about, but um, let's just first jump into uh, the importance, I'd say before we get into this, just of why I call up these metrics. For me, 
SEO is great um, and it's a great thing to prioritize, but if it's not impacting your overall growth of your business, it's really wasted efforts and wasted time uh, on your end. So for me, I really, at the end of the day, like to tie as closely as possible SEO to revenue figures, which is is why I've chosen, like why I look at these metrics mainly when it comes to uh, tracking SEO performance. So for example, are you selling a product? Are you trying to, um, are you selling a physical product like a consumer good? Are you selling a software solution? Uh, really the questions you want to ask when you think about SEO and, and really just, this is just thinking across the board when you're thinking about revenue and, and growth is first off, think about, um, what is the product you're selling? If you're having a meeting or getting a demo booked, what is a meeting worth to your business? So for example, if you're selling a $2,000 widget or a $2,000 product, Obviously, a sales meeting is not going to be worth two thousand um, dollars. That you know, you're not having a hundred percent close rate. Um, you know, maybe in your eyes of your business and your product, maybe a meeting for you is worth fifty dollars. Maybe a meeting is worth a hundred dollars. But you need to kind of sit down and, and hash that out to understand. You know, how much is the conversion action we're act looking for someone to take from organic? How much is that worth to your business? Um, and that's going to help you really nail down the ROI of the time, the money that you're investing into SEO efforts. Um, basically, whatever the action is you want someone to be taking when they find your your website or your product or whatever it be organically, uh, how is that tying into your revenue growth? And you you want to kind of sit down and look at that like as a first step. Before you, before you even think about prioritizing SEO, you want to be thinking about these things and thinking about and asking these questions. Um, so first... Jumping into the metrics, impressions. So impressions are the number of times a page is shown in search results. Um, and impressions is used across the board in, in multiple areas, whether it be social marketing or whatever the case may be. And impressions are great. Like obviously we wanna be, be shown more. We want our brand to be shown more in search results and what have you. It indicates visibility and, in, and does not engage and does not um, measure engagement. You know, this is just how many times people are, are seeing your brand in search results, which there is power to visibility. Um, you know, there is, there is something to be said and, and merit behind, you know, your brand name being shown multiple places and what have you. However, I like to say impressions don't really mean much if you're not generating clicks and ultimately conversions from these impressions. Uh, impressions are really a vanity metric in a lot of ways. Uh, I include metrics here because it, it is important to have a uh, understanding of, of, of impression growth over time, especially if you're creating new content, producing new blogs, you should be seeing uh, impression growth. Like that's just what, that's just part of it. And that's what you should be seeing. However, if you're not seeing it alongside some of these other metrics we're going to talk about today, then it's really not going to do much good. You know, if, if you should be proportionately seeing that if impressions are increasing, clicks should be increasing. Um, so again, I think it's great to have a handle and, and start to see impressions increasing as you produce more content and prioritize SEO. But at the end of the day, it's not a view on Google search is not, and without a click, it's not amounting to a sale. It's not amounting to a conversion. Um, so again, this is, I have this here first, is it is important to have a handle on, but these other metrics, if you're not seeing these other metrics increase alongside impressions, it really doesn't do a lot for, for your growth as a business. That takes me into clicks. So Clicks are, as they say, as it says, uh, tracks how often a user clicks on the page in search results. So again, as I just mentioned, you should be seeing as impressions in, improve and, and grow, clicks should also be improving and clicking. Um, if you're seeing impressions, just like a, a brief like breakdown of how I think about it and how you, know, you can interpret it. If you're seeing impressions improve, but clicks not improve, that means that your impressions are uh, from results that are not at the top of the page. Um, like maybe you're showing at the bottom of page one, you're not generating any clicks from that. Um, you know, th there's room to optimize that content and get it closer to the top of the search results and to the top of search the search page. But again, like I, I mentioned earlier, and we can all probably attest to, if you're showing at the bottom of page one, you're most likely not getting a lot of engagement because people are very often 
not going past the, the first five to six search results in Google search. Um, when someone clicks on your, um, on your listing or your SERP in Google search, it reflects interest in, you know, the content you've produced, the product or, or whatever the question is, or the answer that someone's looking to get from their, their search query. Um, and whenever you analyze clicks as well, it helps you identify is the content that I'm producing or the words and keywords that I'm targeting um, high performing? Like am, are, if I'm generating clicks, that means that I'm showing towards the top of search results. It shows that it's content that people are searching for and looking for solutions or answers to or a product for. Um, ultimately, clicks are more important than impressions um, as these are people who are actually seeing your website and seeing your product, seeing your offering. So uh, just by nature, if you're starting to prioritize uh, content marketing and starting to prioritize SEO, you're going to start to see impressions improve and uh, just by nature of you producing more content. Um, however, you want to be seeing clicks improve proportionately as impressions improve, which then ties into click-through rate. Click-through rate is just a calculation of clicks over impressions. So um, basically, like I said, you want to proportionately be seeing clicks um, in, increase in volume as impressions in click. If you see that clicks are not increasing with impressions increasing, that is gonna bring your click-through rate down, obviously. Ideally, we, we want to be seeing that our click-through rate is sustaining or increasing over time. If we start to see that it's, the click-through rate is decreasing, that means that we're getting more impressions, but we're not either, the content's not relevant, people aren't wanting to engage with it, or, it means that we're showing at the bottom of page one and nobody is seeing us or are viewing us. Uh, one thing to note is that with an impression, if you're on the first page of search results, that is tracked as one impression. So that doesn't necessarily mean that your pay, that your search result loaded in the first uh, above the fold, so to speak, uh, area of, of the search results. An impression could be that you're just on the first page of search results. So it could be an indicator that your content is ranking, but it's not ranking highly enough to, to actually generate a click and be in like the main top of the page of search results. Um, also, I'd say too, when you have a low click-through rate, it can also be an indicator that you need to optimize your titles and your meta descriptions. And I've talked about this before in previous trainings, but just to touch on it briefly, your, your meta titles and your meta descriptions, those are, that's the content that's shown in your search result. So when it comes to like, you know, when you do a Google search and you see the title of the website uh, or the title of the page, you'd want to optimize that to be engaging, um, you know, and make someone want to click on it to, to learn more about the question or the product or what have you. And similar with meta descriptions, you want to optimize all of your meta descriptions so that, you know, what do you need to write to be engaging to your end user, to your audience, to make them want to click on your search result? So uh, again, if you're seeing a low click-through rate, that can also be an indicator of two things, that you're having more, like you're maybe showing up on the first page, but not at the top, so which will drive your click-through click rate down, or you need to go through and optimize titles and meta descriptions, or a combination of both if you're, you're seeing a low click-through rate. Um, I'd say also to it, in my experience, click-through rate is a metric that can be difficult to move, especially as you start to prioritize SEO efforts. And the reason I say that is if you start to prioritize content creation and uh, SEO and, and landing pages and, and the various new pages on your website to drive organic content, just by nature of that, your impressions are going to increase. Um, and, and so that being said, uh, your impressions are gonna increase um, at a certain rate. And the trick is trying to uh, grow your clicks at a higher rate than you're growing your impressions, which is difficult, uh, tr transparently. It, it can be just by how the nature of Google search works, your impressions are gonna just continue to grow. And the reason being is that, you know, maybe you create a, a piece of blog content, but, it's like number 10 on the page 
or it's showing on the first page, but not driving clicks. Um, basically, you're going to want to try to drive that page higher. Um, and if you don't, if you just produce, like, say you produce 10 blog posts, one of them ranks number two, nine of them rank number 10, that is going to uh, make it to where your click-through rate is harder to grow, which, and, I, and I'll say transparently, you, it's very uncommon that you're going to produce 10 pieces of content and all 10 pieces from the get-go are going to be ranking number one. That's just not how it works. For the most part, you're, you're going to, you're going to have a mixture. You're going to have pages and content that ranks highly. You're going to have pages that don't rank as high or that you need to go back and optimize, or, you know, they're highly competitive. Maybe you're trying to outrank like, uh, you know, New York times or, you know, a highly authoritative website. And, and just by nature of that click-through rate, if, if this makes sense, uh, the way I'm talking about it, click, click through rate is a metric that is difficult to move. Um, and when you start to move it, it, when it starts to increase, you'll start to see it increase, but it will be in smaller increments. This isn't something that's going to change overnight. Uh, it's click through rate is really something that, that takes time to grow over time. You should see increases over time, but it's going to be a much smaller metric to move, uh, just by nature of, of how SEO is reported and, and how like click through rates reported clicks over impressions. Um, hopefully that was clear. I know I might've rambled just a little bit there, but that, that's basically how you think about click-through rate. Um, next we look at, want to look at organic sessions, organic traffic. So organic sessions are the number of visitors that are actually on your site via organic search results. Um, this is a strong indicator of successful SEO efforts. Um, increased organic traffic correlates with higher visibility and authority in search engines. So you really want to take a look at your overarching traffic that you're getting to your website. So pulling this metric from Google Analytics or some other tool that you might be using and get an understanding of out of, you know, say 1000 visitors I drove this month, what percentage of those visitors are coming from organic versus others. Um, if you're starting to prioritize SEO, that number should be increasing. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, organic traffic and organic sessions is going to be a key thing to keep a pulse on as you want to make sure that your your efforts and the money and time you're investing in SEO efforts is paying off to more visibility on your website. Um, and conversion rate. So I have conversion rate. I had conversion rate starred when we, when we first looked at the list of, of metrics to look at, because in my opinion, conversion rate is the most important thing we should be looking at and considering. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's great to have a, a blog post or a page that's ranking number one in search results, but if it's not making you money or it's not driving a sale or at the end of the day, or, you know, contributing to your marketing funnel in some capacity, it, it's very hard to, you know, I'd say really weigh like, should I have invested my time and resources in another area of, of my business versus investing time in SEO? At the end of the day, we want to be driving sales. We want to be driving conversions. Um, and so when it comes to conversion rate, this is one of the most important things that I look at to measure SEO performance for clients. Um, so conversion rate, pretty straightforward. It's going to be your total conversions over your total visitors. And I should call out total organic visitors. So we're going to be looking at organic conversion rate specifically. So we want to be looking at number of organic conversions over total number of organic visitors. Um, this also reflects first off the relevance of your content, um, to people who are coming to your site organically, like is, is what they're looking for actually on your website or is it irrelevant? Um, additionally too, it's going to also reflect on your site's UX performance. So, you know, is the site optimized for conversion rate? Are people knowing what to do on the website? Are people finding your product? Are they adding it to their cart? Are they booking the call? Are they booking a demo? Um, this is going to, conversion rate is also an indicator of, of, of that. And also can be an indicator too of how you talk about your product. So for example, if you're driving someone to a product page and they searched for, you know, a... I'm throwing something out there. Maybe they searched for a new armchair and your armchair's product page showed up at the top of search results. Um, and they come, they look at your page, but they don't 
purchase or don't add to cart or what have you, that can also be an indicator of, okay, maybe should I review the product description? Should I change how I talk about my product? Why did it not resonate? Um, these are the types of things that you can learn um, and, and consider as you look at your conversion rate um, for organic traffic. Keyword ranking. So keyword ranking, as it says, relates to the keywords you're actually ranking for in search results. So um, truthfully, if you're prioritizing content and SEO, you should see um, improvement in rankings or ranking for new keywords for the content you're producing. Um, improvements in ranking and ranking for new keywords indicates that you that your keyword strategy or the keywords you're attempting to target are on target. Um, they're uh, you're showing for them, you're ranking for them, um, also suggests that whatever optimization efforts that you have done or are doing with the content you're producing is right on track. You know, if you're producing content, you know, and nothing's ranking, that's an indicator to me that maybe the keywords you're trying to target are either too competitive for a website or brand of your size, Maybe they just aren't things that people are searching for. You know, there, there's not enough volume. There's not enough uh, demand for the keywords you're trying to target. Uh, and can also indicate that, uh, you know, maybe you should look at optimizing your website. Maybe there's something more technical that needs to be done on the front of your website performance. Maybe, you know, Google, maybe you don't have a site map or maybe you don't have, which... If you don't know what that is, maybe that doesn't mean anything to you. But for example, a sitemap is important for your website. Um, but so not rank. So keyword rankings are something you should be seeing improvement for and seeing more rankings over time, especially if you're prioritizing content marketing and, and SEO efforts. Um, and if you're not, it can be a larger indicator of strategy decisions or technical decisions that need to be made for the website. Um Domain authority. So this kind of ties into what I mentioned earlier, just just now about uh, is it is a keyword too competitive? So one of the things that to consider when it comes to keyword, there's lots of variables, and SEO unfortunately is not. We don't operate in a vacuum. Um, just as you know, you're prioritizing efforts to rank for search results or rank for a product your competitor or a tangential product can also be looking to rank for those same keywords. So um, unfortunately, as we, you know, we are investing time and effort into SEO, your competitors can also be doing the same thing or are doing the same things. So one of the things that is important to consider is your domain authority. Domain authority is a number or metric that indicates uh, the strength of your domain and slash your brand, so to speak. Um, it, it ties, it's directly correlates to your specific domain of your website. Um, and by generating more quality and quantity of backlinks, um, you can improve your domain authority. I will say that too, your domain authority, like if you're a new brand or a new website, having a low domain authority is not make or break it. Um, it's not that if you have a low domain authority, you're not going to be able to rank. However, we have to be realistic. And again, I come from the healthcare uh, space. So I'll use a healthcare example. If a company came to me and they said, oh, we want to rank for, you know, uh, how to find help for depression. That is going to be a highly competitive keyword for a startup or a, you know, a new company to try to rank for. You're going to be probably trying to outrank sources like the Mayo Clinic, um, you know, these highly authoritative healthcare brands that have a strong domain authority. And it's just not a good use of time or or efforts to try to rank for a keyword like that. Um, however, if you get a bit more creative with the keywords you're trying to target um, and try to target keywords that have a lower competition or like don't have these highly authoritative brands showing for them currently, um, it's going to make it to where you can compete with a smaller domain, with a lower domain authority. Um, having a higher domain authority signals credibility and trustworthiness in the eyes of search engines. So more times than not, if you're trying to, I would say if you are a site that doesn't have a strong domain authority, don't try to outrank these, these large credible brands or these 
highly reputable domains because it's, it's going to be a waste of time and efforts. Um, the way to improve domain authority, truthfully, it uh, involves consistent content creation um, and creating content that can be referenced. So for example, like, you know, whenever you're creating content, think about, mm, could this content be referenced by another place on the internet? Um, or, you know, actually spend time looking, investing in link building. Um, so like if you wanted to reach out to, you know, a brand who could backlink to your website or you have a partner who could backlink to your website, those are some ideas or ways you can get into to link building. I could have an entire lesson on link building strategies, but uh, that, that's just high level how you can improve domain authority. Um, and, it, and truthfully, it'll have little movement in the short term. Domain authority is not something that changes overnight. It takes time. It takes effort. It can be like pulling teeth <laughs> to get backlinks. So um, again, it, it's something that will, that will happen. And if you get like a press release, that's definitely going to impact your domain authority. So any sort of thing like that is going to be a, a big driver and, a, and a, I'd say a, uh, going to be helpful in driving and improving your domain authority. But again, I like to also say, if you're a new brand, you're just getting started, don't fret around domain authority because we work with, I mean, I, I see early stage companies all the time rank for content and rank for, for search queries that they want to rank for. So it's not a make or break it. It just makes it a bit easier if you have a higher domain authority. Um, referring domains. This refers to backlinks. So this is, again, tying into your domain authority. Referring domains are the just the different domains on the internet that refer back to your website if you're producing content that's high quality can be referenced you should be seeing an increase in referring domains over time um, it's one of those things that like once you crack the code to, to uh, content and producing high quality content referring domains will be slow to increase at the at the at, uh, when you're just prioritizing seo efforts but once you start producing a high volume of high quality content that starts getting referenced by other places on the internet, it's one of those things like once you get to that point, your referring domains will shoot up exponentially. Um, referring domains also is a strong indicator of like backlink diversity and authority. So like having a, a large number of backlinks indicates to search engines that, hey, a lot of places on the internet view this website and this web domain as an authoritative website. They trust it. They trust this website. They trust their domain, um, which is why it ties into your domain authority and your overall SEO performance. Um, and again, it, it should be increasing over time, especially if you're kind of pushing the gas pedal on content creation and blogging, uh, you know, downloadables, case studies, whatever the case may be, um, infographics even, um, you should be seeing this this uh, metric move um, and increasing. And then finally, the last thing in terms of metrics that is important to, to have a pulse on is your bounce rate. So your bounce rate is the percentage of visitors who come to your site, but leave after viewing only one page. So this is, and this again, ties into organic performance. Let's say that you are, uh, you know, driving a lot of people to a, a piece of content, but you know everyone leaves immediately after they view that one page. That is an indicator. First off, that there, it can be an indicator of a few things. Um, it can an indicator of your content is irrelevant. Someone's coming to the page and they think mm, this content isn't good. Um, I didn't like this. Isn't what it said it was. What have you? Um, can also be an indicator of poor user experience and poor conversion rate optimization. So is it that, you know, someone comes to the page and they don't know what to do? Maybe they are confused. Maybe they're, um, they, like, there's an issue with the page. Maybe the page isn't, doesn't load. Maybe there's a formatting issue. Maybe it's not mobile optimized or mobile responsive. Um, could also be like, hmm, I'm driving people to this page, but nobody's, converting. No one's taking an action that I want them to take. Should I go through and look at optimizing the page further for someone signing up to my newsletter or someone signing up to uh, to book a call, to view a product page, to, to whatever the conversion action is you want someone to take, 
uh, that can be an indicator too, that you need to reassess your content strategy from a UX standpoint. Um, reducing bounce rate, well, obviously that, that shows there's higher engagement with your content and higher engagement with your brand and your website, um, which in turn is an indicator to search engines that you should rank higher in search results. Having a high bounce rate for content can uh, uh, hurt your SEO performance because it's a signal to search engines that hmm, this content's not relevant, this content isn't optimized, people aren't engaging with this content, what have you. So by thinking about how we can improve reducing bounce rate, we can in turn improve our SEO performance. Uh, and ultimately, again, at the end of the day, I like to tie this to conversions. All of our SEO work should be tied to how are we making money? How are we getting conversions? How are we driving sales? Um, and having a, a high bounce rate is an indicator of that we're not getting someone to take the action we want them to take. They're not converting. They're not uh, doing the action we want. And like I said, it's it's all fine and dandy to say, hey, we have a blog post that is ranked number one and you know it's for a, a good keyword and whatever the case may be. But if it's not having a direct correlation or impact on your overall business growth in some extent, or you know, ideally sales or conversions, it's not really worth a lot to, to the business in, in a lot of ways. So, um, so again, I, I think that high, high rankings are great, but we should be thinking about how do we improve some, once someone actually finds our content, how do we improve the chance of them taking the action we want them to take? Um, anyway, that, that's just a look at overall the metrics that are important. Um, and you know, if you're all new to this, you probably are thinking, okay, I want to prioritize SEO, or I just started prioritizing SEO. How do I go about tracking this and actually measuring if this is, is even working for my business or that I'm getting an ROI or that, you know, I'm, it's even worth my time and energy. Um, which I, I find often when I when I work with clients and and small businesses, it's uh, in startups. It's like we know it's important and we know that we should be doing it, but how do we know if it's working? How do we know if it's actually making an impact for for us? So this is like my like just basic SEO toolbox that I recommend to anybody who's prioritizing uh, content and SEO. Um, most of these are free. Um, so first off, Google Search Console. It's a free to use Google product, helps you understand how you're ranking in Google search, what your organic performance looks like, and which search terms you're showing up for. It's very easy to set up it. You know, it's a very uh, user-friendly onboarding process to set it up. If you're not using Google Search Console already, do that today, <laughs> do that this week, like add that to your to-do list, especially if you're thinking, I mean, if you attended this today and you're wanting to prioritize SEO, add this to your to-do list for the week. It takes like, you know, 10 minutes to set up and it's going to be helpful, especially if you're wanting to prioritize organic. Uh, Google Analytics, again, free to use tool. There's so many analytics tools out there. I have Google Analytics listed here because it's free to use. It's, uh, you know, gives you what you need to know. However, if you're using another analytics tool, you probably can get this information from whatever tool you're using already. However, if you're looking just looking for an analytics tool to get started, use Google Analytics. Um, it is, you know, it's free to use. Uh, again, similar to Google Search Console, it's pretty straightforward to set up. Um, it's going to help you understand your site traffic. Where are the sources of your traffic? How are people navigating across your site? Which pages are driving traffic to your website? Um, yeah, it's highly recommend it. Again, if you're not using Google and Google Analytics or a analytics tool already for your brand or your website, add this to your to-do list for this week. Uh, because it, there's there's uh, if you're not tracking these things, you you can't obviously measure ROI. So again, if you're truly wanting to prioritize SEO content, get Google Analytics or some analytics tool set up to to track uh, site traffic and source mediums and. Uh, traffic and uh, for the different pages, et cetera. Uh, and then SEMrush, so or SEMrush. So uh, I recommend SEMrush because it is like my tool of choice. I've used so many tools out there uh, throughout my career. So you may have heard of Ahrefs, 
um, uh, what is it? Crazy frog or like tree frog, or there's another one out there that I've used. I haven't used it in years, but there's a number of tools out there. I recommend SEM rush. It's like for me, the standard in the space. However, at the end of the day, if you're wanting to prioritize content and SEO, you need to invest in uh, some tool to help conduct keyword research and find opportunities for the content you're producing. The example I said earlier, like maybe you've been producing blog content for the past few months and nothing's ranking. It could be that you just aren't targeting the right keywords. I mean, you might think that this is a good keyword to target, but how is it competitively? Can you actually rank for this? Is there enough traffic or enough volume to this keyword? Uh, having a tool like SEMrush is going to help you understand those types of things and help answer those questions. And again, Ahrefs is another one that I recommend too. I've used that one as well, and it's it's great. So um, whatever it may be, if if you have to invest in monetarily into any tool, this is the type of tool to invest in. Um, this is going to help ensure that the efforts and the you know the time you're putting into content into um, prioritizing organic is worth it. Um, and it's going to help you have that that uh, better understanding of keywords. Uh, it also, like SEMrush has a number of analytic tools built into it as well to help you track performance. Uh, and then finally, Google PageSpeed Insights. It's a free to use tool for Google, uh, by Google. Um, it's going to just help up ensure that your site is optimized from a technical standpoint, um, which then and helps you ensure that you're ranking well in search engines. Um, so just to just briefly speak about how each one of these plays into tracking, uh, Google Search Console is where you're going you're gonna to track your impressions, your clicks, and your click-through rate. I include a screenshot here just to show you like an example of what reporting would look like. Um, this is going to be your source of truth on how Google sees your website. So how is Google Search Engine, Google Crawlers seeing your website? Um, this is going to be your go-to place to see what search queries you're showing for, um, which search queries are driving clicks. Um, you're going to be able to see how your growth in clicks, uh, if, how your uh, clicks increase over time, how your impressions increase over time. Um, again, I, again, Google Search Console is directly tied to Google Search. So again, this is going to be your source of truth to understand, are my pages indexed? There's other tools and features in Google Search Console besides the metrics component. So you can actually see, are my pages being indexed by Google? Are, is my, uh, are my pages visible to Google crawlers? Those types of things. Um, so again, free to use, highly, invest, uh, highly suggest investing your time to set this up if you haven't used it already. Google Analytics, this is where you're gonna attract your organic traffic or your organic sessions, your conversion rates, and your bounce rates. So this is where you wanna set up your marketing funnels. Um, and again, I could give a whole lesson on how to set up a Google Analytics account and how to set it up like your, your funnels and your conversion tracking. I'd recommend just, there's so many how-to videos out there on, uh, on YouTube. Like if you're just setting up your Google Analytics account or maybe you have an account already, but you haven't set up your marketing funnels correctly, um, I'd recommend going through, just doing a quick how-to video to set it up. Um, but this is going to be where your, uh, your go-to place to track your organic sessions and your conversions, which for me, this is where you're going to actually see what's the ROI. You know, you're going to actually see the ROI on the time and money you're investing into, into SEO and content marketing within Google Analytics. Um, if you set up your funnels correctly to see the actual number of bookings, uh, purchased, uh, like cart purchases, whatever the action is you want someone to take, um, from organic Google analytics can be an over, uh, overwhelming a tool, especially if you're not familiar with analytics tools, or this is your first time looking at one. I said, the main things to focus on are just focus on setting up your funnels correctly. So that's the main thing. If you, you know, you can kind of disregard everything else for the most part, but ensure that your conversion events are set up correctly. You set your funnels up correctly so you know that the conversions that you're tracking are accurate and then understanding your traffic sources. So are people coming from organic search? Are people coming from socials? Are people coming from email or whatever the case may be? But having an understanding of those things in your Google Analytics account are the main things to look at when it comes to SEO and performance specifically. 
Uh, SEMrush just included a quick screenshot to give you an example of what you could see in here. This is where you're gonna track your domain authority, your volume of referring domains, and your keyword rankings. Uh, as I said earlier, SEMrush is my tool of choice, but there's so many other solutions out there. Um, if you're taking SEO and content marketing serious, invest in a keyword tool. And I've said this already, but like this is what you need. To, this is really going to be your uh, main tool to help drive uh, improvements in your SEO performance. This is going to help you with keyword research, keyword tracking, domain tracking. As you see here, like this is a, just one little small widget within a SimRush account, but you're going to see here just in one snapshot, your domain, your authority score or your domain authority, your organic traffic, paid keywords, if you're running paid advertising, um, referring domains, so on and so forth. So um, highly recommend investing in one of these tools, especially if this is something that you want to prioritize. And then finally, so PageSpeed Insights doesn't necessarily tie directly into any of the metrics we talked about today. However, uh, it is like a, a just an overall tool to use to ensure your site is optimized so that you can perform well. If your site's performing bad technically, um, you're not going, to, it's going to be much harder for you to rank. And you, and you truthfully, you almost, I, you almost 99% of the time won't rank if your site is, is not uh, performing well from a technical standpoint. That relates to like things like site speed, image load, um, things that are more technical in nature related to your page, your site speed, your, your page load times, things like that. Um, include a screenshot just of a quick, a quick audit uh, or a quick test you can do. Um, core Web Vitals, you'll see here, Google Core Web Vitals. You wanna make sure you're passing all Google Core Web Vitals um, whenever you are prioritizing SEO. That's an indicator that your site's performing well from a technical standpoint. Um, as you can see here, there are things here that come up in this, this quick audit I did where like you're in the yellow, you know, that's not going to put you as not passing. Like basically I'd say if you're not passing core web vitals, that means that there are some big things you want to address from a technical standpoint for, for your SEO. And again, I like to say you want to have a solid foundation, like in terms of site performance, technical standpoint of the website. If you're before you start investing time and energy into SEO and content creation, because if you're, you know, if you're building content marketing on top of a shaky foundation or like, you know, something that, that's not very stable, you're not going to have the full impact and uh, the best performance that's possible if you're trying to build a house on a unstable foundation. Um, so long story short, highly recommend having a using Google page speed insights to ensure that you are performing well from a, from a technical standpoint. Um, so overall, this is like the, the tools I'd recommend, especially if you're, uh, wanting to prioritize SEO, use these tools, uh, set these tools up, add this to your to-do list, to-do, to-do list for this week. Um, when it comes to the metrics, we've talked about a few, we've talked about a handful of different metrics that are important to just tracking or SEO performance and things you should be seeing in terms of movement. But at the end of the day, tie it to ROI, tie it to revenue. Um, that's going to be the best way to understand if the efforts and, and time you're spending in something like content marketing and SEO performance are actually driving results for, for the business. Um, thanks so much for attending. I, hopefully this was helpful. I know we kind of, uh, dove in different directions. I saw we have some questions here. Um, let me see here if I can pull this up. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ryan. Appreciate yeah. it. As always, sharing your insights. Uh, yeah. As he's going through the questions, if you have any questions to ask, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Also, make sure to scan the QR code that's on your screen right now to have some more one-on-one -on -one conversations. Yeah, uh, someone had a good question here about AI and how to use AI for content creation. Um, I'd say that truthfully, in my opinion, when it comes to AI, we, AI is great to leverage, to help speed up the content creation process. Um, however, AI is only as smart as the user, I like to say, um, and the, or the prompts it's given, um, is it a better way to say it? So that being said, I like to think that the ideal workflow for speeding up content creation 
is first off conducting keyword research. Uh, humans should be doing this. Uh, in my opinion, you should be doing the keyword research to determine what can you actually rank for? Um, what should I spend time and, and effort into creating content for? Uh, use AI to help create outlines around those topics or help ideate around uh, content you should or ideas you should include in that topic. Uh, truthfully, I you can use AI to help write the the content. I would tell you straight up that do not just have chat GBT, write a blog post and post it <laughs> that first off from a branding perspective, that's not going to resonate if depending on, you know, how tight of rain you want to have on, on branding, but also at the end of the day, it's, uh, I will say truthfully there, it has not, Google has not released any sort of features to, um, to ding, uh, websites for using AI. So I, I will transparently say there is nothing out there right now currently that will detract from your SEO performance if you were to, say, crank out 100 blog posts um, using AI. However, there there is talks of that being a thing in the near future of uh, Google actually looking to for common phrases or running uh, content through an AI checker to see how likely something is written by AI before it ranks. So I will say transparently, that's not what they're doing currently, but this is a hot topic in the content marketing uh, side of things and just in the industry right now. So I'd say my rule of thumb is uh, unless you want to, like, for me, I think that long-term growth and sustainable growth, there's no, you can't, uh, you can't just think that you're going to produce a hundred blog posts and they're going to forever be safe and you'll be fine. The power behind SEO and content marketing is that you're creating content that's going to be up online for, for years to come and going to be a driver for organic traffic. So I like to say I, I venture on the side of being a bit more cautious um, and wouldn't advise you to just crank out a bunch of blog posts, especially without doing any sort of keyword research. Like uh, that's like the key thing to to think about when you're when you're doing that type of thing. Um, good question. So is there a way to optimize for SEO with an AI search results? If so, how? Um, so when it comes to, um, and I'm sure we may have all, we may have all experienced the new Google search, um, generative search experience, which is, you know, the AI prompt that's produced whenever Google, uh, whenever you Google something nowadays. Um, the biggest thing that Google is prioritizing is intent and um, informative content. So truthfully, what I see doing well is content that's trying to answer as many questions as possible um, around a topic or around a subject matter. So whether it be, you know, you know, if you're like, I like to think like, try to be as informative as possible when it comes to creating content, that's how you're gonna uh, be able to continue to rank highly in search results and rank in these in like the new AI search results uh, experience. Uh, producing high and in, uh, highly informative content that answers not just questions related to the immediate topic, but also tangential topics can also be helpful. So for uh, trying to think of a good example to share, but like, for example, um, you know, if someone's Googling a question about dementia, and I'm saying dementia because it's just top of mind since it's a client of ours, but say someone's Googling a question about dementia uh, and like, does my mom have dementia? A related question to that could be, does Medicare cover dementia care? That's not directly related to the topic, but you can incorporate that question and content around that question um, to determine if it is a uh, if you should include in, to include that in the content itself, if that makes sense. So try to be as informative as possible and think about kind of like the topic in a three hundred and sixty view of what this is the main topic. But what other questions and content uh, and or what other questions can I answer in the content to kind of give a more thir 360 holistic view of the topic or the question? Uh, and that's how I like, think about that's how you can continue to rank well in the new like age of the AI search results. Um, yeah, I'd say someone said I've used ChatGPT for blog posts. Yeah, they're not going to that's just using it straight for blog posts isn't going to be great. Um and I see someone already kind of answered a question. Uh, 
for around generating backlinks. Uh, yeah, you the key. I'm gonna agree with what they've said. Uh, I would say don't and don't pay for backlinks. That's not gonna help you in the long run, and it can actually hurt your SEO performance. Um, so if you ever get an ad or someone reaching out to you to say, hey, can I pay a hundred dollars and I'll get you ten backlinks? Don't do that. <laughs> That's not the you should not be doing that. That's going to uh, hurt your SEO performance in the long run. Really focus on producing better content that uh, answers questions that people can reference. Uh, some things that can be helpful, some like ideas around things is think about how you can, if it relates to your topic or your brand, how can you create like referenceable metrics or referenceable an infographic or basically creating content that can be referenced by other things on the internet. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that, that's what I would recommend in terms of just how to naturally increase your backlink volume. Um, but yeah, I, I think I answered most of the questions in the chat. So, uh, hopefully that was helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to book a call. I'd be happy to chat further around any of this or, you know, share more insights I can around AI and, and all the, or metric tracking, whatever the case may be. Fantastic, Ryan. Thank you so much for the time uh, with us. We always love working with you and we look forward to our next event with Rex Marketing. Uh, for attendees, we will be sending the recording out to everyone in the next few days. Uh, thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Startout event. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thanks.